Good morning, guys. Today we are going to decoupage our towel rack. It's a wooden towel rack. This one is from up in the bathroom that I've been refinishing for probably about three years now on my own. <laughs> but this is the one that I took out of the wall. If you have a, a wooden one in the kitchen that you would like to decoupage, it's a relatively small project. Pretty easy, I believe. Um, I'll tell you what we'll need. The list of supplies is right here. I am the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and several online retailers, several online retailers, including Scobie Books out of London, by the way. That is my publisher. Uh, probably the best price would be on Scobie Books. And uh, the very first thing we're going to want to do today is take our sandpaper and just rough this up a bit. The next step will be to add the gesso. So what I'm going to do, sorry about that, what I'm going to do is apply the gesso and then I will come back when that's dry and we'll go on to the next step. By the way, you can use these sanding blocks uh, that you get in the craft store. I never mention which grit to use. I just don't get that technical because uh, a lot of times what I do is I just use this same, I think it normally says medium on the side of the sponge or at the craft store on the box it'll say medium grit. I also use these nail files. They come in so handy for these little spots in here and that's what you want to be using for sandpaper. You may also want to keep an old rag on hand that's just wet and clean for your hands or any spills. While we're waiting for the gesso to dry, we're going to want to separate our napkins. So you want to get your fingertips a little tacky. Not so much wet, but do get them, wet them and then dry them a little bit. And go to one of the corners and the napkins start to stick to your fingers. So you can just pull off, that's one end, and then there is the other end. So tear the edges off of the napkins, and you're going to find when you tear your napkins, two of the sides are going to tear right off in a nice, easy line. So this side and the other side, I can just tear these hard edges off. However, when you go to do the other two sides, you'll notice that it's going to chip a lot. Take a very wet brush and go in about an inch and just make a line down that side of the napkin. Close it up. Wet this. <laughs> and then it pulls away right there. And you want to do that before we start touching any of the decoupage glue. I have about five or six, six five or six sips napkins that I've already done this to, and they're ready to be decoupaged. So here's the next step. We're going to start with this round piece. Now, I have a trick that I use when I am decoupaging, which is I put the oven on, I set it to 175. If I could set it to 150, I would. I have an electric oven. I set it to 175, I'll decoupage something, and I'll put this in the oven until the bell rings to let me know the oven has reached 175. I then turn it off, and I let my decoupage items sit in there. Now, I know I could get an oven on FreeCycle somewhere, but just because I love the look on my husband's face, every once in a while I say to him, hey, hon, can we go buy an oven just so I can dry my crafts? It's funny, he doesn't even have to say a word. I just love that look on his face. <laughs> so, 
I do like to put these in the oven. For one thing, it's summertime. Uh, anytime you have a humid day, a rainy day, you're going to want this to dry thoroughly and in the oven. It's a really good way. I'm not sure if that works with gas ovens. If anyone has tried that, let me know. I'd like to share it with other people. But in an electric oven, it works perfectly. When that bell goes off, I turn the oven off and I just let this sit in there. So we're going to take some decoupage glue. Apply it to our piece. You lay this napkin over, and I'm going over the edge here. Let's pull back a little. I'm going over the edge a little bit here, laying the napkin down, and you see how I've got some over the edge? What I'm going to do is take that fine mist of water. Spritz it on there. Now it's making the paper sink onto the area that I just applied the decoupage glue to. You can see how this would get very sloppy, drippy, wet, which is why it's a good idea to keep that cloth around. This is where you want to take that very cheap saran wrap, tear a little piece of it, and for Napkin decoupage, this is the way to go. This smooths out the wrinkles without worrying about pulling up the paper. It won't stick to the saran wrap. You can wrap it around your finger, smooth out any wrinkles. Still, You still need to be gentle. And I'm going to tear away, and again, because this is wet, it's going to tear easily. I'm going to tear the excess off. Do you see how this made it lay perfectly flat? I'm going to repeat those same steps on the other side. You may want to hold this end, the other end, with the saran wrap because if you hold it with your fingers and then you go to pull it away, it's going to pull your paper away. So just hold it at that end while you apply the decoupage glue. By the way, do not apply any glue on top of this yet, okay? We've got to dry it a little bit, then we'll come back and apply another coat of decoupage glue. Always use a brand new sheet of the plastic, the saran wrap. You don't want to reuse the other one because that will get tacky and start to pull up your work. I'm going to put this in the oven. Again, the oven is cool. I'm going to set it to 175. When it rings, I'll let this sit in there for a few minutes to dry. And now we'll go on to doing these side pieces. For the side, I'm tearing some smaller pieces. It'll also make it a little bit easier if you tear pieces that are just about the size that you need. Then apply the decoupage glue, spritz with water. This is a little spot in there that I missed, which is going to be easy enough to cover up. But next I'm going to tear a rectangular shape about that large to put it over here. Again, I'm going to overlap. I'll do the same thing up here and tear some smaller pieces for here. These are dry and uh, they've been out of the oven for a little while so they've cooled off a little bit too. And these spare edges that I was telling you about, uh, even if you pull them away you're probably going to still have a little bit of excess and that'll be against the wall. You may want to leave it or if you want though you can take this nail file any nail file or the look how that comes off makes such a nice clean edge the sandpaper will do the same thing it's just that this nail file is so easy to handle uh, so go around and take off any edges that are there I had a couple of loose ends here and I'm going to do this softly because I don't want it to go right down to bare wood. I just want it to leave a nice clean edge. Now we're going to add our second coat. Once you get these ends all off, I'm sorry, 
Then we'll go around the whole piece and add one more coat of decoupage glue. Let that dry and then we will come back and add the final top coat. And we're all done with the exception of now adding the triple thick. I already poked these holes out so that this could go in there. Now the whole, all three pieces, the whole thing has to be top coated. And I'm using triple thick because it's a very thick, very high gloss coating. You can use other top coats. You would just need to put a few coats on there, especially because it's going in the bathroom and it can get humid in there sometimes. And it does work as a glue. And because we have track lighting in the bathroom, I'm adding that glitter to make this stand out even a little bit more. And I'm using the Martha Stewart coarse glitter because it really seems to hold a whole lot of shine and sparkle. So I'm going to finish this up. That is the end of our project for today. Thank you so much for subscribing. That really helps YouTubers out. It's similar to leaving a tip when you get good service. Thank you so much for watching. And again, my book is Upcycle with Decoupage. And I will see you next week with another video.